Welcome to the Amplifier Podcast, the show where the best in business discuss how you can grow your business best. I'm Wyatt McPherson, I produce this show, and this week we are talking about the industrial industry and how for as long as it has existed, one of its most crucial steps, selling, has been left behind when it comes to developing proper scalable and repeatable processes. But that is all soon to change. Today we've got industry veteran, CEO of Innovator Industrial, and founder of Amplifier, Don Cooper, on to talk about his newest book. So Don, why don't you start us off by telling us what your new book is called and who it is designed to help? Well, the new book is called The Industrial Sales Solution. The purpose of the book is to help industrial business owners, entrepreneurs in uh, small and medium-sized businesses, primarily to help them create a predictable and repeatable and scalable way to really drive their sales process. Most small and medium-sized businesses in the industrial space, contractors and suppliers, they really struggle with selling uh, because it's the one part of their business that doesn't feel on first look to be technical. You know, many suppliers, whether they're a contractor, a fabricator, or a supplier in the industrial space, they have very stringent uh, processes and programs they have to have in place for engineering, for materials, for safety, for quality, even the way they execute work. It's all very technical. And so everything has procedures and processes and competencies and a whole range of technical steps in terms of the way that they will perform, execute, and deliver their services. And for some reason, the the industrial space has evolved where because I think so many of the, the owners of those businesses, the managers of those businesses, they came from a technical aptitude in some part of the business. So they really uh, often didn't get involved in the sales and marketing side of the business, the revenue side of the business. And it's somewhat of a black box for all those technical people who are running these businesses. And, and the black box part, is is really that they they don't understand that selling and marketing is a process and it's a process that they can document that they can train that they can make scalable so i'm trying to help that whole group of people who are owners and entrepreneurs of small and medium sized businesses the management teams in those businesses and and equally the sales people who are hired and who are are trying to be successful in those companies be way more successful by teaching them a a repeatable and scalable way that they can be really effective at selling in, uh, in, you know, in a way that generates consistent and predictable results. So you're saying that it's very much a historic issue within the industry. This isn't a new problem that you've developed a solution for. It's been around for a long time. Do you have any thoughts as to why this might be the case? Yeah, I I think it's a historic thing that's based on uh, a couple of uh, misunderstandings, maybe misnomers on what selling is and what selling isn't. Many, many people will go into one of two directions. And this is the dilemma of industrial selling. One of the paths that a lot of these companies will take, and even the the people who go into sales, they will will take, they, they think that because the product or service that they have is technical from a, uh, a use technical standpoint, a, you know, a, an engineering or a complexity standpoint, that they need to take a technical person and push them into selling because they feel that it's a technical sale. And, and, and to some extent, I think that that's true. Many technical people can become successful in selling if they learn how to sell, not because they're technical. I think having a technical aptitude gives them an opportunity to, to ramp up their success maybe faster, but it won't be successful at all if they simply try to sell on you know, the technicalities of the solution of the service that they're offering. So a lot of companies will go down a technical path and decide to take a, an engineer or an operations person and say, hey, you know everything about our company, so we'll go get business. That is often a real big struggle. Uh, I wouldn't say doomed to fail, but certainly 
it's doomed to have a lot of frustration because a lot of great technical people are afraid to sell or they don't know how to sell because they haven't been trained and the company itself hasn't really created processes behind how to successfully sell in their, you know, in, in their marketplace. The other way that, you know, I would say it's probably a 50, 50 split. The other way I see a lot of companies go is they hire a non-technical person who I would say is a, you know, like a relationship selling kind of person, uh, someone with good people skills, someone that is, you know, kind of has a, an older school approach of, you know, I know people, they know me, I'm good with people and that sort of approach, but they don't know what they're selling. They don't have any technical aptitude. And that part is often even less successful than the, the, the technical approach because they don't have any credibility. And what ends up happening often is the relationship sellers, the, the people, you know, the people skills sellers go around and talk to everyone, have a lot of conversations about nothing and spend a lot of time uh, talking to the wrong people. And ultimately, uh, and often, when they get in front of the right people uh, through sort of through uh, straight brute force of trying to get in front of as many people as possible, they end up potentially losing some credibility for the business because they can't actually have a conversation with the client around the technical aspects of the work uh, and on asking more insightful questions that will help them uh, really uncover how they can best help the client. So you've got sort of two approaches. One is I'm going to put a technical person into sales and they struggle with not knowing how to sell, or you put a relationship seller in front, you know, into the sales and they don't know the technical aspects. And in the industrial space, the clients, uh, almost every kind of stakeholder with the client, uh, whether that is in contracts or in buying or in execution or in planning or in overall project management of the kinds of work that uh, industrial clients are looking for, they're all pretty technical. They're all, they all have very clear specifications. There are procedures on quality, on safety, on materials, on engineering. So many things are technical. So when you put a relationship person in front of them, they almost come across like they're a public relations kind of rep and they don't add any value. What both of these groups do, the technical people are so focused on technical features, benefits, procedures, and the client on, on the relationship side, they're so focused on find an opportunity that, that both kind of end up in the same place where they get on a bid list, they're asked to do three bids and a buy, and often they have never really uncovered a lot of real differentiating value because they were, you know, both going down the path of, you know, three bids th through some request for proposal document that it, they don't have any, they don't create value for themselves, they don't create value for their clients, it becomes three bids and a buy and, the, you know, and often because of they didn't really differentiate uh, to really uncover a different path, um, the cheap price wins and it's really the race to the bottom and, it, and it's often very unpredictable. And I, I often say that if all you're going to do is participate in tenders, you know, you, you're almost better off, you know, being like Amazon and just posting your price book uh, on the internet and letting your client uh, build their own proposal because you're not creating any value if all you're doing is being part of the three bids and buy tender process. And both the technical approach and the relationship selling approach both lead to that place. And that that that's sort of a real big challenge of a race to the bottom for the contractor or the supplier. But I would argue that it is equally detrimental for the client, for the industrial client, because they are not really engaging in the right kinds of collaboration that will help uh, create value for them. And, and when you, you know, when, if the process is done right, then every company out there is different if, if they can communicate it properly. And through that, you know, those unique differences, any company can develop a process that is not just good for them, but is actually good for their client because they will have, and they will be able to uh, 
have conversations and uncover a great way to create value for their client and themselves. And I think that's the real dilemma with industrial sales is it becomes a lose-lose situation and a race to the bottom with the tender process and the three bids and a buy, not just for the supplier contractors, but also there's no real value creation and innovation in creating new solutions uh, for the owner, for, for the industrial client themselves. You talk about there being these two different types of people, the much more technical one who can be taught to sell, and you have the selling type who can be taught the technical knowledge. Does this process of yours favor one type or the other, or is it able to help both? I, I think our solution helps both. On the one side, within the industrial sales solution, we, we create tools that help the relationship seller actually develop a process to understand what they're selling from discovering their difference, the, the differences of that business, uh, of those particular services, equally fast tracking the level of knowledge that they need to actually have a competent and confident conversation uh, around the technical aspects uh, with the tool we call the expert extractor that we'll get into. And then you know, with the technical side, they already have the technical expertise, so they don't necessarily need the expert extractor tool, but they definitely need to um, really develop some insight into why they are different versus why they are the same as everybody else. And when we get deeper into the, into the process, we teach technical focused sellers selling skills, particularly, you know, how to develop the right kinds of people to focus on, uh, how to create the right messaging so that they can get in front of people, the right cadence for prospecting, the right process for selling that isn't about three bids and a buy. Um, so, you know, we help both types of, of people. We can help relationship focused sellers understand technical, uh, the, you know, and, and uncover the technical aspects and the differences in their business, and then still apply a sales process uh, to the, you know, to them as well, because often those relationship people are not talking to the right people. They're not having the right meaningful conversations. They're just going around talking about, you know, coffee and golfing, and they're trying to be friendly, but, you know, you, you don't win business by being friends with 50 people on site. And a lot of people say that relationships matter in selling and, and they definitely do, but you don't start a selling relationship, uh, you know, a, a strong relationship with a client by being their friend. You, you create a great relationship by uncovering how you can help delivering those services and then having a strong relationship because you performed. But relationship salespeople start off by trying to be friendly and they're not creating value up front. And it, it often results in just transactions and three bids and a buy. So we can help relationship people, relationship focused salespeople learn the process, become more technically competent within their company, help their company uncover why they are unique and different and, and craft the right messaging around that so they can get in front of the right people and understand how to win opportunities that are not about three bids and a buy. With technical people, we are teaching them the process of understanding their differences, being able to score and measure how they are really communicating because technical people will focus so much on the technical aspects of their solution that they often, um, it's offward, you know, it's often inward facing where they have a view of the world about how awesome they are, how awesome their solution is, and not necessarily connect the dots with why is that valuable for the client. And also equally, let's say you take um, a really strong, competent um, engineering type person and you turn them into a salesperson. They're going to do really well talking to the client engineering stakeholders, but they might not do as well talking to the execution or the project leaders, the contracts people, the safety quality people, because they don't necessarily talk the same language. 
because they're so focused on what I will call one technical specialty, one specification area being the technical part of the work, but not necessarily all the other stakeholders. And each one of those stakeholders care about different things that are not about the engineering specifications and the engineering competency. It's about other parts of the solution that matter to them. And so it's important for technical people to understand the process of selling so they can still take their strength to the table, but also have a systematic way of identifying opportunities, identifying who the right people are they should be contacting. And then once they find an opportunity, what kinds of information beyond you know, the specs that they should be talking about in their client meetings to really uncover how to win. And then we, develop, we give all of those people a simple uh, strategy on how and a methodology of who are all the people that they need to uncover and meet with to position themselves to win. So we help both technical people and relationship focused salespeople and their, their organization, their management team, and, and ultimately their, their owners create, you know, turn selling into a process uh, the same way that they have a process for, uh, for executing work, whether it's welding or installation of equipment, uh, the same way they have processes for finance and engineering and quality and safety. We help them develop a standardized way to sell that is highly predictable and, and highly effective. And, and that can be scalable so they can grow their business from one salesperson to two to 10 uh, at whatever rate that they choose and be able to plug new people into that process the same way they would plug uh, new people into a uh, trades uh, apprenticeship program or how they would plug new safety professionals into their safety program following their methodology and their program we, they can plug new salespeople, be a technical or relationship into their selling program. And it will be a really predictable and successful part of their business, like every other part of their business likely is. And there you have it. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Amplifier Podcast. If you'd like to download your own free copy of Don's book, The Industrial Sales Solution, then you can do so anytime by going to AmplifierX.com and heading over to the book section. Or you can go to TheIndustrialSalesSolution.com. For any additional info on this podcast specifically or anything else that we do here at Amplifier, you just need to go over to AmplifierX.com or click on any of the links in the show notes. Don't forget to rate this podcast. It really does help us a lot. And make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. We look forward to seeing you next.